Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're starting a new series of videos on black holes. So the question would then, of course, your first question would be, what is a black hole? And one way to describe it would be to say a black hole is a region in space where the gravitational forces are so enormous that light simply cannot escape, that the escape velocity is greater than the speed of light, so nothing, not even light, can escape. But perhaps a better way to describe a black hole is in trying to describe how a black hole actually forms. So we talked in the previous series of videos about neutron stars. And neutron stars were the end result when a supermassive star went to the end of its life cycle, when the end of its uh, the red giant life cycle, and the core had filled with iron. And at that point, no more energy could be obtained by fusing to the next heavier element, and the whole core would simply implode in on itself creating an enormous amount of energy. That energy would blow the star apart, but the remainder, the core, would collapse into what we would call a neutron star. A neutron star is the most dense material that can exist in the universe, besides a black hole. So what a neutron star is, it's simply a ball of nuclear material, neutrons, protons, and electrons, switched together to the most dense property or the most dense state that it can be in. And at that point, it is about 20 kilometers across, a radius of 10 kilometers, and the density is so enormous that a single cubic centimeter of the material would be as much as 100 million tons in mass. So what can happen beyond that? Well, it turns out what holds a neutron star from collapsing even further, because the, gravi the gravitational forces at that point are just absolutely enormous, is the neutron degeneracy in the nuclear strong, for, uh, strong force forces pushing back against gravity. At that point, by the time the neutron star has a diameter of 20 kilometers or a radius of 10 kilometers, the gravity forces are so enormous that there's just a delicate balance between it trying to squish down the neutron star and the nuclear strong forces and the, and the neutron degeneracy pushing back. But at the point where the mass of the neutron star exceeds about two and a half to three times the mass of the sun, it depends on several other properties or several other situations within the neutron star. At that point, the nuclear strong force of neutron degeneracy can no longer hold back and gravity wins. At that point, gravity begins to squish down the neutron star, star even further and from a a diameter of 20 kilometers, we go down to a diameter of 10 kilometers, down to a diameter of 5 kilometers. And notice how the gravitational force, the acceleration due to gravity, keeps on increasing as a function of the radius squared. So if you have the radius, you quadruple the forces. So the forces continue to grow almost exponentially as a quadratic function. So here it's 16 times 10 to the 12th meters per second square, 64 times 10 to the 12th meters per second square. And you can see how the force of gravity just grow enormously as the neutron star gets squished even more. Down to 5 kilometers across, 2 kilometers across, 1 kilometer across, but it st doesn't stop there. 100 meters across, 10 meters across, 1 meter across. Where it actually ends, no one really knows for sure. But essentially, the idea is that the volume goes down to essentially zero. Does it really go to zero? Of course, we don't know for sure because we don't know what the properties of physics are by the time we reach this kind of density. The density is just off the scale, absolutely enormous. So we end up with something that we call a singularity. The volume essentially approaches zero. We don't really know if it goes actually to zero or there's some small volume left at that point. But what we know is that all the mass that was there before is still there, just squished down to an enormously small volume. Around it is a region, so that within that region, space has truly changed. The space-time within that region, close to that singularity, has now curved itself to the extreme. Remember that it's the curvature of space that slows down time and that creates the sensation of gravity. At that point, the curvature becomes infinite and the volume essentially goes to zero. But any time you're around this region, you still feel the forces of gravity due to the mass that is there. At this point, the minimum mass in there would be about two and a half to three times the mass of the sun squished down to something incredibly small. And that essentially, this region here, is then called a black hole because no information can leave that region. 
The force of gravity is so strong that even light cannot escape that region in space that's been curved to the extreme. And that is then called a black hole. That region is a event horizon, right? Well, we'll talk about the details later, but yes, the event horizon is the boundary, so to speak, of that region. Does the event horizon as you put more mass into it, again we'll talk about it, then the event horizon will grow in radius, and so therefore, yes, the event horizon can get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I thought you said a neutron star doesn't become a black hole. It will become a black hole if for some reason the mass is increased to the point where it exceeds two and a half to three times the mass of the sun. At that point it will collapse. But the well, once it begins to collapse, the diameter will continue to yeah, get smaller and smaller. So it starts at 20 kilometers, and once we get to this point, then we start following down in this path right here. Yeah, so, how so. does it increase in mass? It could increase in mass by being close to the binary partner, where mass gets pulled in from a, a nearby other star or something collides with it. Sometimes two neutron stars collide and exceed the mass. There's a number of ways in which it can happen. Mm -hmm. Very good.